A long time ago I made a video of how to use this valve grinding machine. Did a couple valves on it. And now I'm rebuilding a set of heads here. So I thought I'd do a video on how to do seats. So I'm using stones. Apparently that's the old school way to do it. Um, they got all different kinds of cutters now that'll do a three angle valve job in one single cut and everything else. But this is the way I learned how to do it. I'm comfortable with it, so this is how I do it. So, one general thing with doing seats is you want to make sure that you do your guides first. Um, that way, when you recut the seat, you know you're going to be good in relation to your guide. So, these heads are very borderline. Um, these inner guides here are a little loose. But these are stock heads, and it's not a customer's. These are my personal heads, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, this is just going on a stock motor, kind of temporarily. So I'm just going to run them, but make sure you do your uh, guides first. So that way you got a good, good starting point, good foundation for your your valves to go against. So when you do guides, you can just put liners in them. They've got kits. For like probably six, seven hundred bucks, you can get a good starting setup to put liners in. There's maybe two or three different brands and setups that you can get to do that. But like I say, in this case, I'm just going to run what's there. Good way to check: put your valve in, and you want it pretty close to the seat. You don't want it way out here, but you know, get it about there. I'm going to try and do this one handed, it's not going to work, but you want everything clean, so this is after you clean, wire brush your valves, wire brush your ports, soak the heads, everything, you want very little movement right here. So that right there is fine, because by the time we put oil on that guide, there's going to be no slop, so I don't know if you can even see how much that's moving right now. But you can barely feel each side when you wiggle it by hand. So that right there is okay. These ones here, like I say, are kind of questionable. I don't know if we'll be able to uh, show this one on camera. From side to side. That one's a little bit much, but like I say, I'm going to run it. It's not terrible. So... The way that they're going to wear is they're going to wear this way because that's how the rocker arms push on them. You can see it's going to be uh, pushing the valve side to side going this way. So this is where it's going to wear the most is going in that direction. So once you're ready to actually grind your valves and seats, you pick your stone. Um, I'm just using these rubies. Uh, these were the old school general purpose stones. I think they're 80 grit, but it's a pretty good just general purpose stone. You can get these at Goodson or any of them supply houses. So you get this on your dressing fixture here. And you set this to your angle. So one thing you also got to double check. While I'm setting the camera down a hundred times here. Most valves are at 45 degrees, but an easy way to check you take your valve faces on two valves, get them touching each other. And if your valve stems are parallel, then you're at 45 degrees. Um, some, like, I think Cadillac engines and stuff like that, they used, I think, 35 or 40 or something wonky. So it's a good idea to just double check that. Most of your small blocks, Chevys and stuff, are going to have 45 degree angles unless you've got some weird stuff going on. But anyways... To get that going, you want to dress your stone at whatever angle. One thing to note, um, usually when you do this, you have a one degree interference. So you grind your seats at 45, grind your valves at 44, or something along those lines. Um, that way you got a, a one degree kind of interference fit. Gives it a little better seal. So I'm going to try set this camera somewhere. And get the old grinder going here. 
So this is what the uh, grinders look like. They've got air powered ones. This is an electric one. This is an old uh, Van Dorn Vibrocentric. So just throw this one there. And then you've got your adjustment for your uh, diamond tip there. So I'm going to be threading that wheel in and out. And uh, that'll take more and more off. And you don't want to go super crazy with it and waste your stone, but you want enough to where the, the 45 degree face is going to be... It's going to have plenty of room on your seat. So, I'm going to grind this real quick. Hopefully you can see something here. Okay. Safe to squints. Now you can see we got a nice 45 degree angle on there. So we're going to double check that. See if that's going to be far enough. And then I'm going to go a little tiny bit more. But it's pretty good. Like I say, these guides in the middle are a little loose. That's not really supposed to happen, but it's happening. So, I'm going to get this stone dressed, and then we will go from there. Alrighty, so I've got this dressed. See, it's at a nice 45 degree angle there. So, now you're going to need to get a pilot. Um, when you're doing heads, you're going to end up with a billion of these. They make two different kinds. They make ones that has a screw on top and it flares out at the end so you can tighten it up and really get it cinched into your guide or they make these ones that have a bit of a taper um, it's got like half a thousandth or a thousandth taper on it that way it slides in here and then gets tight once it starts bottoming out um, most of the time you're going to be using like 11 30 seconds that's what this one is um, your small block Chevys small block Fords this Pontiac, usually 11 30 seconds. Um, I think big blocks are 3 8 um, The old straight 6 Fords, like the 200s, I think those are 5 16 So you'll end up with a bunch of these. They make them oversized. This is right at 343 thousandths, which is 11 30 seconds. So they make these in oversize as well. So you'll have like 344, 345. That way, if you've got a guide that's a little loose, you can get the next size in there and it'll snug it up because this right here is what makes the seat exactly centered on your guide you don't want this floppy at all you want to make sure this is nice and tight in there so once you get your right pilot in there you got your stone ground you're pretty much ready to go so let's throw this thing on there and a lot of times they've got what they call a bump spring yeah, you put this low tension spring on here and that'll keep this above the seat until you're ready that way it's already spun up when you touch the seat but we're just going to do it this way so don't put any pressure on it fire it up get it spinning and then just put let the weight of this do the work don't really push into it you don't want to take a boat load off but uh just do a little bit with that and that's pretty much all there is to it so I'm going to try to set this camera up and show this in action here. If the grinder will shut off, that would be nice.
and you just want to go until hopefully you'll be able to see something here without any glare. Holy. Okay, maybe that's better. Focus. But anyway, you can kind of tell it's a nice uniform finish. Um, you don't want to go super far. You don't want to sink your valves in. You just want to barely take enough off there to where there's no pits left and it's all smooth. And all you should be able to see is a little tiny bit of uh, kind of roughness from the from the stone. So you can see there's a couple little tiny pits there. That's not that big of a deal. Rather leave a couple tiny pits that are just on the edges there and not go too far than try and get everything and end up going too far and sinking the valve in. So you can see here, still got plenty there. When we're all done here and we're uh, lapping them in, one thing to double check is that all your valves are at the same height. So once we get all the valves ground and all the seats ground and everything's ready to go, we'll flip it back over and we'll be able to put all the valves in it. And you should be able to put a straight edge across all the tops of these stems here. And they should all be pretty even. So you can kind of play with it as far as how deep you go. You know, if you got a valve that's kind of sitting high, you can sink it in. If one of them's low, if you really wanted to, you could sink the rest in a little bit. So, anyways, there's that. So, so that's your 45. Usually what you do, you get your 45 degree in there, and then you'll have several different stones here. And you'll have a 60 and a 30. So you'll do your 45 first, then you'll hit it with your 60 degree, and that'll get this inside edge here done. And then you'll do an, a uh, 60 degree on the top. And what you want to end up doing is making all three pretty even. So you got your 45 right in the middle. And that's your three angle valve job. So Anyways, that's just the uh, the quick and dirty of how to do it. Um, I'm going to get the rest of these done here and then show the finished product. So you can see these here, I think, were multi-angled. I'm not sure. But anyway, you can kind of see the before here. There's all kinds of pits. Oh my goodness. Let me try and focus here. You can see there's all kinds of pits in it. If this thing will stop, there we go. So all we're doing is trying to smooth all that out, I'm not trying to take any more material off than that. So anyways, like I say, that's just the quick and dirty of it. But that's uh, basically how we grind all seats.